We're going to be installing the magic splash guard. Magic. Magic. And I uh, picked this up at Home Depot. And um, packaging says there's one guard. And I, I find that very funny because, I mean, you can see that there's one. It's like, is there somebody out there who's like, oh, I thought there was like three in here. And they have to bring it back to the store because they got ripped off. But again, that's, that's pretty funny. Uh, whoever designed this packaging, I think I had a sense of humor. Um, there's instructions in the back. We're going to kind of follow those a little bit. Um, I've actually already installed one. The reason I'm installing a splash guard is because my beautiful daughters don't know the concept of using a shower curtain. It's like they get in the shower and they just like, like they're just showering with the thing open. They don't know how to like close the curtain all the way. And uh, they're actually splashing water all over the floor. And being on the second story, uh, we had water come through the ceiling through our light fixture. It was like, oh my God, what the F? Like, what's going on? So we have to teach them how to use a shower curtain, which I thought everybody knew. And besides the annoyance of water flowing through my ceiling, the, the baseboards down here uh, were actually getting water damage over every time they're showering, they were getting wet. And apparently baseboards nowadays are made out of basically cardboard, so they were swelling and cracking. So I actually had to remove the quarter round of the baseboard, uh, put new baseboards, new quarter round that was actually made out of wood. I had to reseal it, recaulk it. Um, so this bad boy here is gonna prevent some of that water from just dripping down in there. So that's the, the goal with that. So I got the splash guard installed in one of the bathrooms. Um, the other bathroom I'm in is actually belongs to the daughter that caused Niagara Falls to come through my ceiling in my dining room. Uh, she's not here right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed in her bathroom because I'm already starting to get water damage. Even her at the age of 20 doesn't really know the concept of a shower curtain. As you can see here, here the baseboards are already starting to crack and come apart and that's from just water being poured or dripping onto that area and then it's damaging that as well. Uh, on top of that, um, she doesn't know how to take out her garbage apparently. So according to the splash guard instructions, before we apply the splash guard, we need to clean off all this uh, grime and stuff that's accumulating. And I didn't actually realize it, but she's got a pretty good amount of soap scum here. So when she gets home from work today, she's gonna have to clean that. But for now, I'm just gonna clean the area we're applying. I'm using Windex. Uh, you can use anything else. You just don't wanna leave any kind of an oily residue because you need the double stick tape on the splash guard to take adhesion. So the splash guard has a double stick adhesive that runs from here and then it goes around the bottom. And this actual piece actually comes out um, because it's probably impossible to stick it like instantly at once. So you apply this first and then you slide this bad boy back on and you lock it in place. Um, that being said, it's still got a little bit of a trick to it. So we'll start with this piece first. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna start here and we're gonna peel off the double stick like this. You're gonna center it in the middle of your tub and then you're gonna apply it. Now this is tricky because you're gonna apply the bottom and the back simultaneously and if you leave a gap, you're gonna get a leak in there anyways. It's gonna completely ruin the whole point and it's pretty good uh, double stick. It's high bond. So I kind of apply the back first and then I apply the front. So you wanna make sure that it sticks. Now if you get a little bit of a gap in here, it's okay because I'm gonna show you a way to remedy that or what, what I would recommend. It's not in the instructions, but if you want to do it properly, well, I'll walk you through that as well. So the next step is I'm going to peel the double stick backing off of this guy here. We're going to expose the full length and then there's a track down here and we're going to line this up with the track. I'm just going to slide them in place all the way back. Now, you're gonna, you see how this guy's still kind of loose? We're gonna straighten him out. I don't have my level with me. And we're just gonna apply him against the wall. Now, because my house has got some issues, not the best quality of building, you can see that I can pass this thing. It's not the, the, the problem of the product, it's the wall is not even. So again, check this out. What, what the F? So we're gonna apply it as best as we can, like that. All right, so here's my secret weapon. I'm gonna take some caulk, and I'm actually gonna caulk the gapping on this. Again, it's not in the instructions, 
Uh, but because this is a double stick foam tape, over time, it's gonna accumulate moisture, it's gonna accumulate possibly soap scum and grime, and it's gonna get moldy and funky, so I don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna caulk this edge. It's also gonna help me with my spot down there where I was able to pass that stuff through. That would just be an area where I would accumulate water. Uh, and if you don't know how to apply a caulk, you're basically just gonna put a small bead of it in here, and it doesn't have to go in perfectly the first time. We're just gonna apply it like this, and then we're gonna go all the way down the edge here. And it's okay if you make a little bit of a mess because you're gonna go back in with your finger and you're gonna cl clean the seam. So we're gonna go anywhere where there's a gap, I'm just gonna inject it in there. Here. I wanna squeeze it into the gap all the way down. I'm gonna put some more caulking in here. Off the edge. And again, we're gonna try to get in these cre into the, the grout lines there. So, all the way down here comes the cleanup part all this extra you're not going to leave it all lumpy like this because people will make fun of you you're going to take your finger and you're going to smooth out that edge in other words you don't want to have lumpy grout or caulk. you don't want to have lumpy caulking here and then we're going to go down the edge with your finger and i've got a paper towel here and we're just eliminating all that extra caulking finger. Don't do it. I'll Stop. No, no, I got it. And then you swipe it all I want to do it. Down. Eddie, go ahead with your black finger now. Just go straight on the edge. You're going to go like that. Keep going, keep going. And then just go straight on the edge. So once you got your bead done, there's going to be some excess here. You're going to take a paper towel and you're just going to wipe it off. Okay, we're going to repeat on the outside here. Do you need another one? Yeah, give me a sec. I saw some other Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say. All right, so that's how you install the Magic Splash Guard. Um, let the uh, caulk dry. Um, <laughs> let the caulking dry. Don't mess with it. And uh, my daughter's not allowed to shower here until tomorrow. So once it dries, it's going to shore it up so that it's not... Um, loose anymore. It will actually close all the seams that we had um, before. And it's going to be watertight so that double stick adhesive will last a long time. Okay.